Hello, my name is Chris with Packet Pioneer, and welcome to this video on how to set a filter in Wireshark for conversations going between stations in the same subnet. Now, the reason why we might want to set this filter is to catch conversations between two stations. Uh, conversations that aren't going out to remote services or servers, but really between stations. And that's something that we should watch out for because typically stations, uh, those will go talk to services, they'll go talk to email servers, web servers, things on other subnets, things that actually need to go out to other networks. But a lot of times we don't want stations talking directly to one another. Uh, sometimes what that can indicate is they're doing scans or they're trying to find out uh, what ports are open on each other, um, which might show that one or the other has been compromised in some way. So I'm going to show you how to set a filter for this, and we can see what kind of traffic that we see flowing between uh, local stations on a subnet. So to set this type of filter, we're going to have to set a filter for a subnet, not just a single address or conversation, but any address within a range. Now to do that, let's go ahead and go up to the display filter. So I'm just going to use ip.adder, which is a common one we should be familiar with if we're used to working with display filters in Wireshark. And I'm going to drop in the subnet address that I'm using right here in my office. Now this is the network identification, right? So I'm going to do slash 24. What that will do is it'll show me any address in the 192.168.1.0 range. So there's my subnet filter. Now as you can see, this filter will also catch when I have this address or an address in this range, either as a to or a from. So here, for example, I can see there's some addresses and they're going out and talking to this multicast address. But my goal, what I want to see, is when I have 192.168.1 on both sides, both as a source and a destination. So I'm going to modify this address, or the filter, slightly. I want to take a look at when this an address in this range is the source, and I'm going to use my little ampersands, when it is a destination. So what this filter will do is it will show me when I have a conversation from a station on 192.168.1 to a station within that same range. So here you'll notice in my trace file that I have a conversation between a station and another station on the same subnet but as well as conversations from stations out to the broadcast address. Now if I'd like to, this is where I can add a not filter and I can remove these 255s if I don't want to see the broadcast conversations. So this is where I can start to scroll through and look for interesting things that are happening on my network. Here's one for example. I see there's a station at 166 talking to 162. By the way, 162 is the local IP for my station that I'm using to capture this trace file. And I can see that it's an SNMP request. It's a GET request, and this is the uh, identification of where it's going within the MIB. But my station turns around, sends our ICMP destination unreachable, letting that station know, hey, I'm not supporting SNMP. I don't have that port open, and I'm not supporting that service. That's what that uh, ICMP packet is telling me. So as I scroll, I can see a few pings. I can see my Dropbox land sync discovery protocol, so uh, a few services that are uh, being sent out there. I also see, since this is on my home office, I can also see a few UDP conversations between my TV. If I look down into this UDP conversation, or this UDP packet, come down here, I can see my Samsung TV. That's coming from uh, this 196 address. Uh, I can see a few other discovery protocols going on. So it's pretty interesting to do this kind of conversation analysis, especially in a home office. You'll start to see how your Roku is working, your Apple TV, your, your uh, Samsung, so whatever you have, uh, that type of chatter. But the type of things that we want to watch out for, and if I scroll through my conversation, this is where I can get down into this area, and if I notice, I see several sins coming from a certain station, this 166. It's sending out several SYN requests, SYN, SYN, SYN. It's looking for port 6, port 10, port 3. That's on my local laptop. Now, what my machine is doing, my laptop, it turns around and it's resetting all these connections. So what this 166 station is doing is it's doing a port scan. 
It's trying to find out what ports does my local laptop have open. Now for me, I know what this was. I actually generated this from a tool that I used to do port scanning. So I'm aware that, of what this activity was. But if I saw this in a regular environment, uh, this is definitely sketchy behavior, we could say. We want to do some more investigation on 166 and find out why is it doing uh, this type of port scan. Does it have some, has it been infected? Does it have some type of malware on it uh, where it's trying to propagate that to another station? Now from here, one thing that I might want to take a look at is what ports do I actually have open? Now for the majority of these SINs, as we scroll through, we can see that my machine is turning right around and sending resets. So it's saying, hey, I'm not supporting that TCP port number. But what I want to know is what ports are open, which ones are available and are responding to that SIN. To find that out, I can go ahead and add to my display filter or just to really start over with a new display filter. I want to filter for all SIN acts in this trace file. So that would be where I see a SIN, and then my machine, listening on that port, turns around and sends a SIN ACK. So to do that, I'm going to come up to my display filter, and I'm just going to wipe this one out for now. And what I want to do is I want to add tcp.flags.sin equals true. So what that does is that a filter for all SINs in the trace file. Now cl clearly I have a lot of SINs, but what I want to know is not just where the one is true or that flag is set for a SIN, I also want to see where an ACK is also set. So let's do TCP flags ACK equals one. So that will show me all SIN ACKs in this trace file. So as I look through the port scan, I noticed that my machine actually did not send any Synax at all. So that's good news for me. It tells me that my laptop well, was shutting down those connection requests as they were coming in. But I do want to go find out who that station was, that 166, and find out why it's sending that uh, Syn attack. So this was just a quick video. This is a great exercise to do from your office just to find out what conversations are happening locally within your subnet. Keep in mind, stations, they do like to, like to talk to servers, they like to talk to things that are off net, but really, station to station, those are conversations that we want to keep an eye on, make sure that we don't see anything uh, that shouldn't be going on. I hope this is helpful for you, and thanks for watching. See you on another video.